Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Welcome back to Impact Weekly. Time for another session together. These are great. I really enjoy these. New question coming in, and I think it's an interesting one. Uh, This is the question we got. At the moment, I have zero expansion opportunities. Where and how do I start? Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Maybe we should zoom out a little bit and see where, where can this person come from? The thing that really sticks out to me when I see this question is at the moment, I have zero expansion opportunities. My question or the way that I look at that is, is it true? Is that really true? Or is there a limiting belief that's getting in the way of this person Mm. seeing those opportunities? And I think interestingly with expansion, especially in customer success, because the nature of what we do in customer success there's always been a little bit of a, and sometimes a lot, uh, of a resistance to, to basically doing upsells in customer success. Being commercial ha- has sometimes even been an issue. If you have that belief that customer success shouldn't be commercial, if you have that mm-hmm. belief that customer success shouldn't be responsible for, for upselling, for expansion, yeah. then that can also keep you from seeing opportunities because you just have this limiting belief. And I'm not trying to be like a motivational speaker here, but sometimes we get in our own way. And so we have to change our attitude and and change the the way that we view certain things. And I think expansion is one of those for a sizable subset of customer success professionals, heads of customer success or CSMs Mm -hmm. themselves, that we look at expansion in customer success as something that is taboo, yeah. something that, that hurts trust with customers, all, the, all mm. these myths that can cause you to look at these things the wrong way. And so therefore you're like, I, I don't even, I don't have any expansion opportunities. So we can talk about some of those myths to help, yeah. help you get out of your own way a little bit when it comes to right. expansion by changing those limiting beliefs. It could be, or is this person just starting off? Is it the mm. first day mm. on the job? Could that be the situation or? But let, I think we could assume that this is not the case. And maybe this person is all of a sudden asked a lot about this. How can we, maybe this is an initiative coming from his leadership team or right. his or her. So maybe that's the scenario as well. Without having the context there that kind of popped into my mind is in my book of business right now, I, I have no customers that are at a point where they would expand. Is it, I don't have anything to sell my customer. Like, I don't know. I either don't have or I don't know what I would yeah. essentially sell my existing customers. Another one is, of course, also that some we know a lot of customer success teams are really overwhelmed. They are working above their capacity and maybe expansion is the ones that gets deprioritized as well. That's we are currently in the throes of our head of customer success program that the the program that's all about scaling and so we are talking about this week capacity planning so we're right there in in the middle of all of this and yeah capacity planning figuring out how just how many customers can my csms actually work with in a knowing that there is a certain certain number of person hours required to deliver appropriate experience of that and we know that a lot of times when we do this capacity planning or, or you know, try to get a baseline of capacity right now, we know that CSMs are often at two, 300% capacity. They're working with yeah. way more customers than they should be. And in a situation like that, something has to give. And yes. what's going to give very often, it's the thing that we weren't super comfortable with in the first place. So it's mm. expansion. Now, as we've seen um, over the last six months, a year, there's been more pressure on customer success organizations to deliver real value to the company beyond simple yeah. retention, beyond yes. simply maintaining the status quo and protecting revenue. There's been a, a drive to try to like do things that bring in additional revenue, maybe even things that help with the sales cycle. So more advocacy, stuff like that. With that, 
we know that all of a sudden, okay, we have we have CSMs that are over capacity, but now we need to be focused on expansion. And then we realize, okay, expansion isn't something that that we can really look at as something extra on top of what CSMs do. It really needs to be built into this really just the customer's journey towards yeah. success. And all of that also requires a mindset shift at the CS leadership level. So it's there's a whole lot of moving pieces here. And we don't know exactly what's going on with mm. the person that asked this question, but it's probably one of those things. <laughs> it's probably somewhere it is, in there. Definitely. But I think we should also just address the like the importance of expansion. And if we bring it up to the Anyone in SaaS, anyone in the subscription business know how know the importance of high net revenue retention, and you will have churn. Uh, and unless you have a good expansion model, you will not be able to get above one hundred percent net revenue retention. Yeah. And I, I think that's, I think everybody knows this, but do you have a really good model, a good way of working with expansion to support that? I think this is also, we will get to, get to this, and I think that's like the, the higher level here in this question is actually everybody from the board down wants a high net revenue retention number, but have we actually enabled the team through pricing and plans, through capacity, through skills, through competence to do that? Basically, right? No, is usually the answer. Yes. No, we have not. You're right. So net revenue retention, just to, just in, in case you're you're listening to this and you weren't 100% sure what we're talking about there, it's basically we start out a, a time period, we'll say a quarter, with some amount of revenue from our existing customers. And then over that quarter, some customers are going to leave and take all of their revenue with them. Some customers are going to stay, but they're going to reduce their spend with us either through a right sizing of their account, so downgrade, or maybe they they come up for renewal, and in order to stay, they need a discount. We they reduce what they spend with us, what we call contraction. All the revenue that leaves through churn and all the revenue that leaves through contraction needs to be offset somehow. Mm. And so the way you offset that, well, first of all, you try to reduce that, right? Try to get churn down to as low as possible. Never going to be zero, but mm. we try to reduce churn as much as possible. We try to reduce contraction as much as possible by making sure customers are adopting and going through a, a proper onboarding experience because that's usually what uh, um, an increase in contraction is usually tied back to early lifecycle stuff. Yeah, And then where we can't completely reduce those things to zero because you won't ever do that, we need to offset that with expansion. So customers buying more. So those customers that stay with us, we want them to spend more with us. Mm. But it's not just a... It's not just a want no. and it's not just a need from our side. The reality is customers that simply renew at the same level every year, they just renew at the same level. Maybe you increase your prices a little bit, but I don't really mm. count that as expansion. They just stay at the same level. That's not a good sign. Assuming there are no. logical reasons to buy more, like they're from their perspective, yeah, exactly. They exactly. should be buying more. From our perspective, they should be buying more, but they don't. It's a mm. bad sign. It means they're not it wanting is. to expand, not just what they pay you, but they're not wanting to expand their investment with you. They're not wanting yes. to, to increase that. And I think that's where we need to understand, like expansion isn't something extra. It's not something on top of customer success. It is customer success. Exactly. I mean, I think that's a big, that's a limiting belief if you think it is. It is. And... Yeah, and it, and as like with everything you do, maybe first year you were okay with the goals you met the first year, but if you don't get to get get more, get to hit ne your next level of goals, and you you don't progress, basically, that's gonna actually you're actually going backwards uh, in in a sense. So I think, of course, but progression, customer progression and expansion go hand in hand. In an ideal way, and and that's basically what, what we're saying here. That if you, if we have, if we see there should be natural expansion happening, and it's not, it's actually a bad sign. It's actually even a risk sign uh, for a customer. Yes. Maybe yeah. they don't. Maybe they think they can't do more with you, and they will. Uh, it could even be a potential churn just because yeah. they, yeah, they we're not 
investing in them and or they're not investing in us. Yeah, it's it's a key thing to customer success for sure. It is what you just said though is I think just super important. We often see customers. We will see customers churn out and. If we are able to follow up with them and, and get a, a reason from them, like after they've left, we're able to get a, a legitimate reason from them. We'll often hear things like, I outgrew your solution. Like I needed to do these other things. Yeah. And you go, but we, you can do those things we, with us. We got them. We, there was, yes, it's oh. very true that oh. sometimes, mm. right? It, it's, it is true. There are times where customers will outgrow what we offer. And in that case, it's almost like, great. You graduated. That's fantastic. We did everything mm -hmm. we could together. But that's, that's I think that's pretty rare. It's mm -hmm. often that the customer just didn't know that, that for this new goal they had, that you were still mm -hmm. the solution for it. And so yeah. by not thinking about this stuff and, and sort of positioning our product, hey, when you're done working on this goal, Here's the next thing that you should probably focus on. The other companies that are similar to yours, other of our customers that are similar to you, this is what they focused on next. And, and by the way, in order to focus on that goal, you might need this additional add-on. Like mm. putting those things out there and operationalizing that ascension path, essentially, mm. is something that isn't just a money grab. It's not just about driving revenue with them. It's, it's here, I'm going to put in front of you the thing that's going to make you successful. And I'm going to say, yes. this is, here's your path to continued success. And here's what you're going to need. And maybe that is something that you would have to pay extra for. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. There's nothing right. wrong with that. I think actually, so going back to what we we're talking about earlier about this, um, potentially des desire to not be commercial with our customers. I think that's, is actually harmful. So where a lot of people think expansion hurts trust, um, yeah. expansion doesn't hurt trust. Upselling doesn't hurt trust. What hurts trust are two things. One, trying to sell the wrong people on the wrong product at the wrong time. Yes, oh. that hurts trust. But that's not what we're talking about here at all. No. The other thing that hurts trust is withholding the right thing from the right person at the right time because you yeah. don't feel like you, you need to be commercial because you feel uncomfortable with the process. Mm. I don't want to talk to them about that because I don't want to try to sell them on something. But that's the thing that they would need to reach their goal, to accelerate their path to their goal, to reach this new goal that they stacked on top of this other one. Like mm. We need to just think about the fact that fundamentally we have a commercial relationship with our customer and there are going to be times where buying something more from us is the most logical next step for the customer mm -hmm. in order to reach the goals that they've already laid out, that they've communicated to us, that they've committed mm -hmm. to. Again, we need to get out of our own way and think about this stuff the right way. I think that's, that's such a big deal because the rest of it and the stuff we go over in our expansion program at Impact Academy, which yeah. starts, if you're listening to this live, starts very soon, December 4th, 2023. But we run it several times throughout the year. We talk about how to operationalize expansion so that it is right. just part of your customer success operation. It's just part of the customer's journey. But whether you come to our training or not, you need to be mm -hmm. looking at it the right way. And I think making sure that it's just part of customer success management and not something extra, I think is the critical, not just the critical first step, but that is absolutely how we need to be looking at this just overall. Yeah. No, the goal is, of course, not to have this person asking the question zero opportunities yeah. in your yeah in your list or in your csm in start deliver or wh whatever you use you that should be yeah it should be just a natural part uh, of your work week uh, these customers are now hitting their next goal or close to that and we are now planning for the next one and part of that is to do more together and a part of that is expanding with us so it should be coming up naturally of course not all of them will maybe happen as you time them but it should be very much a planned, managed process and part right. of your, like every, any other process you drive in customer success. And of course, what we, yeah. Yeah. I think as what you just said there made me think, we need to make sure that expansion isn't just hope and wishes. 
And that it just happens when it happens. When a customer says they need more, maybe at renewal, then we'll add more. And then we just get where we get. Or because that's our approach in customer success and there's a mandate for expansion and we're just laissez-faire, whatever happens mm. with it, somebody's going to fill the void of a lack of an operationalized expansion opportunity. Who's going to fill that void? Sales. So they're going to come in and try to strong arm our customers, trying mm. to sell them the wrong thing at the wrong time because they're not customer success focused. They're focused on just closing deals. And that's going to start to hurt trust with customers. And it's also just going to not be as effective. New business sales tactics applied to existing customers does not yield the results that, that you know, I think people would hope it would. Yeah. So we need to look at things differently. And that's what we're going to talk about in, yes. in just a minute. But I want to touch on something that you brought up before we started recording, which was critical to this whole thing. And that's pricing. Yes. Talk to us about how pricing can be a limiting factor in expansion. Right. No, I think we touched on two things. Like we talked about mindset, first of all, that expansion, we are commercial expansion. It's a natural part of doing customer success. It's actually a sign of progress. It's a sign of the customer investing more in us and, and to achieve more. So first of all, it's, I think that part, but then, uh, and then the second part we talked about just now, which is that it should be, we should have a model for it. It should be planned. There should be a structure around it. But then third part is actually pricing, which is if you, uh, I think you, you mentioned an example where you, where you were consulting a company that had a eat them, all you can eat license model, and they wanted you to help them with expansion. And if they have everything from start, from the get go, it's hard to expand, right? I think that's one of the, the uh, worst case scenario in terms of expansion. But I would say if you have, I think pricing and plans, you need to really have that to support expansion. And if you front load and sales, sales, of course, want to get the highest type, high, highest revenue from when they win the deal. So if you have not optimized pricing to enable expansion, then you might see little happening, of course. So that's one part of it. I think, how do we set up the pricing to support land and expand? If you're familiar with that concept, but it's also another part of pricing is also where you have Legacy pricing, you have legacy plans. And I think sometimes that lim that's limiting as well for the customer success team that they don't really know how am I supposed to move this customer from plan B, which is not in place anymore, to plan C, which is the new plan. And uh, I think you need, to, you need to both work on the pricing structure so it supports expansion but you also need to work with what the existing customer base, how it looks like there, because it's, my experience is that it's usually quite, it can be quite messy and can be quite a lot of variances, differences, ifs and buts, and you need to help your team maneuver in that environment. And I think that's also very much about being commercial, about seeing opportunities and working with the customer. And, and I think that's a lot of times overlooked as well. It is. I think, look, if customer success is being tasked with expansion, and I, I think I, this, I believe that expansion should sit under the customer organization. I yeah. think that new business sales should go after new business, and I think expansion should happen outside of new business sales because it's a, it requires a whole different approach. I I think we should decouple revenue generation from sales. That's another mindset thing where it's not all revenue generation has to flow back through sales. I know that's a big ask and a big culture change, but I think that's how we need to look at it. So if you are being tasked in customer success with expansion, you don't have any input into pricing as head of customer success. That needs to change because yeah. you can't be asked to do something and then be given the parameters within which to work. And those parameters are not designed to do the thing that you're being asked to do. So to the extent yep. possible, as head of customer success, you need to push for this. You need to advocate for this to have a seat at the table, to be in the room when pricing decisions are being made. And going back to your, your point about legacy pricing, we have customers that are on these legacy plans. Can't be up to the CSM in the moment to try to figure out how to work with those customers to, to move mm -hmm. them somewhere else. 
we, we generally don't like to have customers on legacy plans just because it adds, it's just adds confusion and complexity and we want everybody to be on our modern, more well thought out plans. We also don't want to punish our early customers who we've grandfathered into this pricing because they were there. They came on board when we needed them. We, we don't want to punish them. We want to reward them, but we do want to move them onto these plans. So you need to work with whomever is in charge of pricing. And that's, that's going to depend entirely on your company. Sometimes that's in marketing. Sometimes it's in sales. Sometimes it's there, under a CRO is you have an actual pricing team. It really depends on the complexity of your organization and all of that. But you need to have that seat at the table. You need to be able to say, look, for customers that are coming in now, like here's the ascension path that we see, the mm -hmm. land and expand path for our legacy customers. Here's how we think moving them from where they are to this pricing, this new pricing tier. This is the mm -hmm. path that we think would make sense. And then mm -hmm. be a part of that. Because yes. if you're just taking what some, another part of the company is giving you, and then you also are, you know, re responsible for doing something with that, it's just going to be very difficult. And so to the extent possible, you definitely want to be, to be a part of that. So that's just one more thing that as head of customer success, uh, you need to be pushing for and advocating for. And as a CSM, yeah, you probably aren't going to have a lot of, you're not going to be involved in a lot of that stuff, but you need to advocate for yourself to your head of customer mm -hmm. success. I'm having to make these weird decisions around pricing in the moment. This is not mm -hmm. conducive to, to, to me being able to get my work done. This is not going to help me hit my numbers. This is not, these are not decisions I should be making. I need to be basically told what to work with. It can be parameters and I can have some flexibility, but we, I can't just be making this up in the moment. And I think if you're head of customer success and you have CSM having to deal with that stuff in the moment, like that's, I won't call it a failure on your part, but you need to take control of that and make sure you're setting your CSMs up to thrive and setting the customers up to thrive as well. And, and that's important. So pricing is a really big deal. Oh, I know one, one other thing that we, that you brought up before we started recording, which I think was really it's a mind blowing idea here that we sometimes it's easy to overlook. And that is oftentimes we talk about land and expand everybody. That's such a great term, right? Everybody uh, talks about it, mm. except in reality, <laughs> it's, it's not something that that happens as much because sales mm. really wants to front load, front load that sale, make sell as much as we can up front. What you brought up was something that I think everybody needs to hear is the reason behind the need to front load the sale to get to sell as much as we can to the customer up front. And it had to do with a lack of trust in the expansion process. Talk about that a little bit more. No, but of course, sales are measured on revenue and the more revenue they can close, uh, the they are yeah basically paid on that. So that's going to be like a very clear incentive, but also if they don't see expansion happening later, maybe as a company or as a CRO, you, you probably are going to be okay with the sales team maximizing the deals in revenue, but not maybe maximizing it from a customer's perspective. Yeah. And that's actually setting them up maybe for even like being quite disappointed, maybe even churn eventually. So it's a lot about having, if you have a real expansion model working, then you can, of course, as a CRO, you can say, okay, let's just get the customer in. And then we, we have this very great, we have this super process that our cust this customer line that basically we take them through, come, we take them to the next goal and we have expansion along the way happening. If you have that, you can trust that process, then I think as a CRO, you're much happier to go down maybe in ACV for the initial deal, but know that you, you will grow that later on. Yeah. If you don't trust the process, then you're going to avoid the process. So if I don't trust that when a customer comes in, we can work them through that up ascension plan yes. and we can grow them over time. If I can't generate revenue from them across their life cycle, then let's get as much as we can out of them up front. It makes total sense. So from a customer success standpoint and in operationalizing expansion, we're putting something in place that will actually build that trust and allow 
us to sell less to our customers up front, grow the customer over time. I've seen this in world-class companies where you're getting 200, 300% growth in customer account value over that first contract year because you're able to expand the customer versus you sold them everything up front, just trying to front load that deal then not expanding them over time. So if you can do this, you can really get that exponential expansion in account value. But I'll just say one more thing before we move into some real solutions here yeah. is I think we're seeing, we, we've seen over the last few years or over the last, certainly the last year and, and maybe even the last six months. Um, so we're recording this right at the end of November, 2023. Um, and so I would say going back to sometime in about six months ago, we really started to see this contraction going up, mm -hmm. contraction at renewal. And it was primarily coming from customers right-sizing accounts. So what I mean by that is they bought a bunch of stuff up front. Mm -hmm. They didn't use it. Yeah. So at renewal, they're not churning. They're not leaving mm -hmm. completely, but they're saying these add-ons, these additional seats and stuff that we bought, we didn't use. Yes, there are onboarding issues there that we need to look at. There's adoption issues that we need to look at. But we also need to look at the fact that we very likely oversold them initially. Hmm. And we did that because we didn't trust the expansion process or we just didn't have an expansion process in place. So let's try to sell them as much as possible. And then, of course, you get to renewal and you haven't been using these things. So it's time to either right size that account, get that downgrade, or the customer says, I want to keep all that stuff, but because I didn't use it, I need a discount. So now whatever it is, we, we get that contraction. Had we sold them just what they needed, worked them through a proper onboarding, mm. worked them through proper adoption, got them to a progress milestone where there was an expansion opportunity associated with that, mm. sold them something more, went through adoption or even onboarding for that add-on, Hmm. And, and then got them to even maybe another milestone where there was an expansion opportunity. We might've come out of that first contract year, not with contraction, hmm. but actually with expansion in the revenue yeah. from that account. So that's why, again, the mindset shift, looking at this the right way, I think is all hmm. required and then having an actual operation around that. But let's talk about that. The actual solution here, right. going back to the question, I have zero expansion opportunities with exactly. my customers. Where, where do, do I start? I start? Um, yeah, and, and um, one thing here is, of course, just to do you know what you can, what type of offers you have to actually offer your customers, what expansion possibilities are there? So maybe that's number one here, just to understand where, where, what do we have here? Yeah, I think what we talk about in, in our Impact Academy expansion program, we work through the entire process here where, where we first identify progress milestones that have associated expansion opportunities with them. but. Mm. But yeah, what are those? We, we talk about expansion opportunities, like what? Right. There's some pretty obvious ones, Yeah. but I think there's some things that maybe you haven't thought about before. And I want to be really clear that the way that I think about it, when I think of expansion opportunities, I'm, I'm all in, that's how we talk about it in Impact Academy. I talk about it with my clients. It's an expansion opportunity for the customer. So it's not just something that's an opportunity for us to sell more. It's an opportunity for the customer to to buy more or consume more or do something that's in service of their goal. Yes. So that's the change. That's the, just a, a little a little bit different of a point of view yeah. that I think makes a, a big difference. It's an opportunity mm. for them. We talk about taking inventory mm. of, of what you have to offer and we can throw out a couple of, of ideas here. The obvious thing is users. additional users, licenses, seats, yeah. that kind of yeah. thing. But let me tell you, in our head of customer success training, in our in the one that's going on right now, yeah. week two of our training is about scaling expansion. And somebody said, look, we sell by the seat. So mm. we sell one license per what for each user. Our product can be used by the whole company, but we sell to sort of smaller companies. If we sell to a company that has 10 people, we sold them 10 licenses. If if we want to sell them one more license. Yep. They have to add a whole nother person. And that would be growing, in that case, that would be growing their company by 10%. Right. Huh. Now, in a big company with a department of hundreds of people who, where they're always growing, there's always turnover and all this stuff that's maybe not as big of a deal. There's something to think about. Like, even in that situation, your customer may have to, may have to change literally the structure of their organization 
just to buy one more thing from you. So you definitely want to look at other other things as well. And so we talk about add-ons or adjacent products. Yeah. You have your core product and you have just other things that you can activate that sort of enhance that that product. Mm. But maybe you have a suite of products, right? So there's something mm. that's adjacent to the core product, right? So those are, that's also obvious. What else do we have? No, but we talk about also like there, there's consumption models, there are variables and that, that type of um, models are or a combination, maybe you have a, a seat model or you have a per account or per uh, yeah team or so, so something like that. But then you also have a volume-based variable um, model as well where, yeah, it can be a lot of different things there. So that could also yeah. be a way to upgrade or expand with the customer. And that's, of course, that's usually linked to their using or getting more out of your platform as well. So that could be... Maybe that's even very happening more or less naturally with the customer. I'll tell you, yeah. valuations for companies that are either purely consumption or subscription plus consumption, like they, they went through the roof. A lot of things have come back down. But even though I think the multiples that you get on consumption models is still higher because that can truly be a, a as the customer grows, they consume more. Think about adding to your marketing suite of products, you add text messaging. So now text messaging is you just sort of pay per message that goes out. Maybe the core marketing product is per, per, per seat subscription. And then you mm. have this consumption model on top of that. It's fantastic. Yeah. And we have a whole bunch of other ideas that we have, that we present yeah. in, our, in our Impact Academy expansion training. But one that I want to bring up here that I think is really interesting is professional services. Yes. Uh, training. These non-recurring services that you might offer in addition to whatever your core technology product is. Hmm. A lot of times those services are looked down upon. It's even investors will say, if you have too high of revenue coming from non-recurring services, uh, especially people powered services, we don't want that. But here's the secret to it. Those services hmm. that a customer buys one off, maybe it's some customization Maybe it's training, like I said, those services, the revenue from them is almost irrelevant hmm. because those services often set the customer up to consume more yes. of, our, of our subscription service. Or So you've trained up new users. Now those users can actually consume the licenses that they bought, yeah. maybe need more licenses and then or add-ons or whatever. Hmm. And then from a consumption standpoint, perhaps integrating something into the product. Now we've enabled this consumption to improve. So think about non-recurring services right. that you also could sell that would then lead to even more consumption of the subscription and the, and the consumption-based services that are out there. Lots of different ways to think about this. Yeah. Hopefully we gave, give you a few ideas there. But I think Definitely. if you really want to deep dive on this, I'm going to pitch it. Come to our expansion training. It's, it's really... This is what world-class companies do. Yeah. We're going to show you exactly how to approach this. I'm not ashamed to pitch that because it's one of my favorite topics and it's something I get really excited about because in customer success, we really do have an amazing opportunity to be a growth driver. And in fact, I think we should be generating far more revenue than in customer success than the new business sales. So like we, yes. should be the, we should be the top revenue generator in the company new revenue from existing customers. That's the yes. pitch. December 4th <laughs> expansion yeah. program. See you there. It's going to be, yeah, it's going to be great. Perfect. So let's wrap this session up. So what are three key takeaways here? So I'll lead in to this one. And I think we talked about it a lot. It's a lot about the mindset here when it comes to expansion. And as we said several times now, like lack of expansion is actually a bad sign. That's number one. Yeah. And just to take that to the next logical level, expansion can't be based only on hope and faith. It has to be designed as part of the customer's journey towards success. And number three here, you have to be, as head of customer success, you have to be at the table when you talk about the pricing and plans, that's crucial for expansion as well. Those are our three takeaways. Uh, thanks for listening and see you soon. 
Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success. Thank you.